Hey everyone, Raider here. Hope you're all doing great and having a fantastic day. So in today's video, we're going to be taking a look at all the new features that are included in One UI 5. Without any further delay, let's go ahead and jump right into it. Swipe down, let's go into settings, and you'll notice here right off the bat, we have two new settings options, connected devices and modes and functions. Connected devices I absolutely love. So what Samsung has done is they have taken all of the external device connections, like connecting to a Windows PC, another Galaxy phone or tablet, um, a smart TV or smart device. All of those types of connections are now managed in one settings area, instead of going into all the advanced options, the lab settings. And as you can see here, we have quick share, auto switch buds for our earbuds. We have all kinds of stuff, link to Windows, Samsung Dex, Smart View, Galaxy Wearable, Anything to do with connecting to other devices is now all in one settings pane. I really like this a lot. In addition to connected devices, we now have a new section called modes and routines. In the past, Bixby routines were buried under the advanced options, a little difficult to find, not too overbearing, but nonetheless, they're kind of buried and not stood out in front like they are now. Now they're right here in this modes and routines. Modes is a new replacement for the Bixby discovery page that was on previous versions of One UI. So now we have different modes based upon certain times of day and what we're doing, sleeping, driving, exercising, and you can set up specific routines based on each one of those. You also have the ability to add your own custom routine, as well as using the Bixby voice assistant to call up any of those routines. If you're not familiar with this at all, I'll go ahead and link a video down in the description. It's a complete tutorial on Bixby routines. While we're in the settings, let's go ahead and take a look at one more thing that's been added. Nothing major here, but it is kind of cool. If we scroll all the way down and we go to About Phone and click on that, you'll see now that we have a picture of our particular device, and this is driven off of our model number, so it actually picks up your color and everything. Like I've got the uh, green, gray, or green, black, whatever they want to call this color. You'll see that it resembles the color of my device, and it will for yours as well. All right, the next feature I want to talk about is with the camera application. Let's go ahead and open that up real quick. We'll open up the camera. All right, so what you'll want to do is go into Settings, and then right here we have this watermark option. So this watermark option, this isn't new. This has been around since the last One UI. I think it actually came out before the version before that. So even before One UI 4.1.1. But we have some new added functionality here if we open it up. So in the past, the only option you had was to enter in some specific text and save it. And that would be put on the bottom of each of your pictures. Now we can add the model number, date, time. We can pick our font. We can pick the alignment. So a lot of options have been added here for the watermark section that weren't available before inside your camera settings. While we're inside the camera app, let's go ahead and take a look at one more piece of functionality that's been added in One UI 5. If we go over here to mode, all right, and if we pick pro mode, all right, you'll see now we have a histogram up in the top right hand corner that we can click on and it'll expand out. And if we click on it again, it'll collapse. Very useful for those that are serious about their photography. Very cool to now have a histogram. This has been available in the Expert RAW application, but not everyone wants to use that because of the limited functionality. So now you have it built in to the default camera app. Very awesome. All right, so the next feature I want to share with you guys is the new quick split screen functionality. So let's go ahead and close all of our apps, right? And what we'll do to start this off is just open up any app. We'll just pick the camera app again. It's nice and convenient. And you're going to minimize that real quick. You're going to open up your recent apps, and this is really cool, and you can do this for any app you have open. Press and hold it, and then move it wherever you want, and it's now going to start a multi-window session for you, for wherever you put it, and you can do a pop-up window. But let's go ahead and drop it at the top so you can see what I'm talking about. There, it loads up our camera application up top, and it gives us the ability to pick another application down here. Super fast and quick way to start multitasking on your Galaxy device if you have One UI 5. All right, so the next tip involves a Samsung keyboard. So you want to go ahead and start up your keyboard. I'll go ahead and enter the search box there. And you're going to want to click on the emojis icon right here. Besides the default emojis that we see here, we now have a new set of emojis that are called Kaomaji. And I'm probably butchering that name. But nonetheless, you can find them right over here. We'll scroll over to the side a little bit. Click that pink little button. And here we go with the Kaomoji emojis that have been added to One UI 5. All right, the next feature is multiple language support 
per application. I think this is really cool. If you're bilingual or you're able to speak even more than two languages, maybe you communicate with folks via WhatsApp in one language, then your regular messenger app. Maybe you're commuting with your folks that are in your local area on your regular messaging app. Um, all types of different situations. So if you're bilingual, this feature is going to be awesome. Let me show it to you real quick. You're going to go into settings and you're going to scroll down until you get to general management. And then we have this option called app languages. You're going to click on this and it's going to list out all your applications that you can change the language for. You see here, I'll pick Chrome. Now I can change the default language from English to one of these other languages. All right, for this next feature, while we're in the settings, let's go ahead and head over to our lock screen. And you'll see we have the little lock screen indicator here, this graphic here next to widgets. Go ahead and select that. And a new feature has been added to the wallpaper section for your lock screen. Let's go ahead and hop into wallpapers. We'll scroll down a little bit. And now we have wallpaper services. So now you can have dynamic, high quality, high definition wallpapers sent to your device. And you'll always have new wallpapers to look at on your lock screen. All right, so for this next feature, let's go ahead and swipe down. Go back into settings, and now we are going to go into battery and device care. Go ahead and click on that. And if we scroll down just a little bit, we have a new option here called auto optimization. So this is really cool. Go ahead and click on this. You can basically set it up to restart when needed when it needs to do an auto optimization on your device. This is new for One UI 5. Although the optimization panel, this has been around for a while, but this auto optimization is a new feature here. All right. Let's look at a feature that's been added to the gallery application. So let's go ahead and open that up real quick. I'll do that. And I'm going to go ahead and just pick an image. All right, so we got this picture loaded up. So now what you want to do is hit the edit icon down here. All right, and then we're going to hit this little smiley face looking thing here. This is going to be our pin input. All right, go ahead and pick a pin. And the cool option now that we have is we can now draw a shape around this and hold it and it will now make a perfect shape around whatever it is you're trying to circle, put a square around, a triangle around, whatever shape you want. It'll automatically detect it, and as long as you hold it there while you're done drawing, it will go ahead and make a perfect shape for you. All right, so the next One UI 5 feature that I want to talk about involves your contacts. So go ahead and open up your contacts app, and I went ahead and picked a contact. I just made a dummy one here for Raider Tech. Um, and then what you want to do is you're going to want to go ahead and hit this edit button, and then you're going to have this view more option here at the bottom. Go ahead and click on that. All right, and if we scroll all the way down here, we have call background. Go ahead and click on that. This gives us the opportunity to actually change the background to a static image or a 15 second video clip without sound for when somebody's calling you. Let's go ahead and change the background for Raider Tech real quick. So go ahead and pick something here. You can see here that we can pick some default wallpapers that have already been provided to use as a background for when the phone call comes in. We can reset to default, but then we can also go up here and hit this plus sign, and we can select a background from the gallery, including short videos. So let's go ahead and do that real quick. Select from here, and I did a little clip of me just going through the, with the Tab S8 Ultra. Let's pick that real quick. And that's what it's gonna look like when I get a phone call from Raider Tech to my device. You'll have the video playing in the background. You can pick an image, whatever you want. I think that's pretty cool, especially if you take the time to come up with some cool background videos. And remember, they're capped at 15 seconds, and don't worry about the audio because it's not going to play. You can just say whatever you want when you're recording the video. All right, so this next option is for intelligent Wi-Fi and gives us some more monitoring functionality so we can get the most out of our home Wi-Fi network. Let me show it to you real quick. We'll go ahead and swipe down, and we're going to go back into settings. In connections, we're going to go ahead and click on Wi-Fi. All right, so it's connected to my Wi-Fi device, but up here we have our three dots to go into more settings. Let's go ahead and click on that. And you we see here we have this option for intelligent Wi-Fi. Go ahead and click on that. All right, now what you want to do once you have this is you want to scroll all the way down, and we're going to click on intelligent Wi-Fi. I think it's like seven or eight times. Let's go ahead and do that real quick. All right, then once that's done, you have Wi-Fi developer options available to you. Go ahead and click on that. And then we're going to click on nearby Wi-Fi information. So this is super cool. It actually shows you a graph of all the different Wi-Fi devices in your area. But where it gets really awesome is when you head over here to channel utilization. Go ahead and click on that. This is going to show the usage of the channel that you're on and how much interference you're getting from other channels that may be close to you. 
and then it's also going to give you a recommendation for the best channel that you should use on your home network to avoid interference. And then all you got to do is log into your Wi-Fi router and set it up to work on that channel and you're going to get the optimum performance from your Samsung Galaxy device when you're connected via Wi-Fi. Very cool that we have this built into our device without having to download a third-party app. Awesome. All right, so the next cool features that I want to talk about involve widgets. So let's go ahead and go to a blank screen here. I'm going to make this my home page for now so we can just mess with this screen here and it doesn't go back to the other ones. Now we're going to go ahead and click on widgets and we have a new smart suggestions widget, which is pretty cool. So what you can do is drop this on your screen. We'll go ahead and do that real quick. Add. All right, and it gives you some information about how it works and you're going to click OK. So here's what happens with this smart suggestions widget. What happens is, is based on what you have coming up next, it will change this widget to show information for that particular application. Let me give you an example of that. Let's say you have a calendar event coming up in an hour or so, um, but you also have a timer and alarm coming up maybe 15 to 30 minutes. Well, it would show your timer and alarm up here first, and then after those are done, you would see your calendar application get put in here because you have upcoming calendar events. So it's very dynamic in keeping track of what's scheduled on your device via these applications, and it will keep the widget up to date with what's happening. All right, the next cool feature with widgets that I wanna talk about is stackable widgets. So this is really cool. It's been out on iOS since I think iOS 14 or 14.1. We've had it on some Google Pixel devices. Well, now we have it on One UI 5. This is super awesome. Let me show you it in action. So we'll pinch in with both fingers, go to widgets, and what you want to do with stackable widgets is pick two or more widgets that are the same size. So like two or more that are two by one, two by two, uh, four by two, any of these different size variations. That way they can stack on top of each other cleanly. So let's go ahead and see that in action real quick. I will go ahead and swipe down here till we get to Chrome. All right, so we have this two by two widget right here. Let me go ahead and add it to the screen. All right, cool. We'll put it right in the middle there. And let's pinch in with two fingers again, go to widgets. And this time I am gonna go to clock. And let's see, I think we have a two by two widget. There we go, alarm clock, two by two. So what we'll do is we'll hold on to this and just put it right on top of the other one and let go. And now you'll see that the most recent widget that you added is on top. However, all we have to do is swipe like this to go to the widgets underneath it. And what else is cool too is you can press and hold and we have some different options here, like this right here. Let's go ahead and take a look. We can pick the ordering of the widgets. We can add another widget to it. And we can also pick to auto-rotate the widgets as well. Um, in addition to that, if you press and hold and you press the settings icon, you will have the ability to pick the color, the transparency, and whether or not you want that particular widget to be in dark mode. And you can do that for each one of your widgets that you have in your stackable widgets little section there. And you can add multiple of these on each different screen if you want. Doesn't matter. So really cool functionality for stacking multiple widgets on top of each other. And if you want to get rid of all of them, all you do is click on it and you have this option to remove all, which is really handy. It's going to remove both the widgets at once. All right, so the next feature that I want to show you is we now have support for multiple timers in One UI 5. Let's see this in action real quick. Hey, set timer for 30 minutes. 30 minutes, starting now. All right, so we have one timer already running. Let's go ahead and get another one going. Hey, set timer for 60 minutes. One hour, starting now. Cool, so we have another timer going. Hey, set timer for 90 minutes. One hour and 30 minutes. Awesome. And we're starting now. Awesome, so now if we hit view timers here, we can now swipe through all of our timers that are running, and we'll get alarms for each one of these timers. And we can also delete individual timers that we may have, that we may have going that you don't need. Um, so really cool functionality for getting the most out of timers on your Galaxy device. In addition to this, there's a few more options available that we'll touch base on. And I also wanna do a separate video on the new DEX functionality that's been added in One UI 5. But this has been a quick overview of some of the new features that you can expect when you get the One UI 5 update. And besides these obvious features, I do want to say that the overall experience with this is really smooth. I think you're really going to enjoy it a lot for those of you that aren't on it yet. 
Um, it just seems to be a little more fluid. Swiping up and down between the app drawer feels a little more fluid. Even little things like going into my Samsung feed here, like this, here I'll show you. It just feels a little more fluid than what it usually does. It's nice and smooth. That 120 hertz really works out nice in this situation. So here we go, some top features for One UI 5. Um, if you don't have it on your device yet, most of the rollout is happening this month and next month for the Galaxy tablets. So stay tuned for that. And as always, thanks for watching.